Good afternoon from College Park. I'm Wayne Viner. Bruce Posner and our special guest, Bruce. Sheehan Stanwyck. Sheehan, welcome in today. And, Thanks so uh, much. I know you're doing the next game. You're doing the women's game against Michigan. Does Michigan fare up against Maryland, or does anybody fare up against them right now? Well, Maryland's tough, but these are two of the three undefeated teams in the nation. So along with Boston College, Maryland and Michigan undefeated. And I have to say Michigan's probably the biggest storyline right now. Just right. their emergence. They came in the season unranked. They've now moved up into the top ten, and it's an awesome Big Ten matchup. But it's senior day for Maryland. they got a great senior class. And so a big crowd. And a big crowd. Uh, doubleheader with the men. So it's going to be a big-time matchup. But we're going to see how Michigan stacks up against Maryland. Talk about uh – our coach, the tremendous Kathy Reese, now the winningest coach, Maryland coach ever. Look at her record. How do you describe that? How do you define her record? here it's it's a mind-boggling isn't it it's unbelievable i mean her the her dominance as a player not only here then assistant coach a head coach but i think what really speaks to is not only the wins which speak for themselves but the way her players talk about her and the way the alumni comes back and how much they appreciate what she's done and the team bonding but the wins it's just unbelievable you play maryland and you know that you they're going to find a way to win nps nonprofit services has the technology and know-how to achieve your nonprofit goals we have all the tools that you need for your nonprofit to be successful, including tech support, consulting, development strategies, and business continuity to make sure your data is safe on prem or in the cloud anywhere all the time. Call NPS at 877 797 8776 We're easy to reach and easy to work with. I tweeted out the other day, I happened to notice Under Armour came out, which you do. Under Armour came out with the uh, top first 11 players in the women's game five of them are going to maryland what else do you say that, i mean they recruit the rich, great they re <laughs> the rich get richer they, they just say, reload yeah. and every year you feel like you, they've graduated some awesome players a couple, handful of them and they're able to reload and then you get to see them at the tour Town awards and hand them trophies right. <laughs> so it works out they're the top in the beginning the top at the end but if it's not maryland who's the other most impressive team if it's not michigan who is I think you got to look at Boston College. Yeah, and right they're, now. They're, they're ranked number one in the nation. We won't get to see them face the Terps until we get to maybe mm. postseason play. So um, they are tough to beat. They just had a big win today against Duke. Um, yeah, Sam Apuzo, who got the Tuaritan yeah. Trophy last year, is at Boston College. So a lot of big names are there, and they are stacked. Would love to see these two teams match up. I think it would be a really fun game. Right, that's Maryland right now is 15-12 uh, to 12 over Michigan. We're in the last few seconds of the game. So it looks like Maryland's going to win. How tough is it for a team like Michigan? They've battled everybody, all right? They gave Maryland so much trouble that it's almost unbelievable. And yet, Maryland comes out on top. And, you know, now they've lost seven in a row, but they're not a team that should be three and seven. Right, and that's just so hard. I mean, every game is a matchup. The parity in men's and women's is so strong. I was out at Michigan last week, and the Michigan men's had a, a doubleheader with the Johns Hopkins um, Blue Jays, and Johns Hopkins came out on top. But there are those teams that you talk to any head coach, and they're nervous to play them. They're, um, they're great, but at this point, it is all competitive and trying to get into your conference tournament play. So, so Bruce, i got a question for go you. Go ahead. Last year... Michigan looked like it was the team on the rise. Maryland went there, had a lot of trouble right. with them. I think we lost, actually. What changed for them? How do you go I, from I, where I they haven't were? followed them close enough because they have been winning. But I know Kevin Conry very well. Mm -hmm. He's a great coach. And obviously I'm not rooting for him today, but I'm kind of hoping somewhere along the line he gets some W's because mm -hmm. uh, he's a heck of a coach. I don't know. But uh, obviously there's a weakness at faceoff. All right, just like what Maryland had last week. You can't lose 18 out of 26 face-offs against a number one team like Penn State and mm -hmm. think you're going to win. Mm -hmm. It just isn't going to happen. Same thing here today. They lost the face-offs, but the 10-man ride killed Maryland today. It really hurt them, which is I haven't seen it, you know, that effective. And Michigan State in it. What's your opinion of the men's 80-second clock? We seem to think maybe it's a little bit too long. You get a three-goal lead with five minutes left. And you win a face-off, you could stretch that game almost to where it's over. Yeah, I wasn't a huge proponent for needing a clock. Um, I, I know that the timer on was sub subjective, but um, I, I've liked what I've seen so far. Haven't been able to see it, you know, in, in so many close games. But I love what it's done for the women's game. That's been great. You didn't have the stalling problem like you do. There's a need game. for some kind Something. of clock. 
Um, and the time, you know, I don't know. I find it just confusing. I think it just make it easier. I like how the women's, it's from possession. There's no period, line that you need to get over. Midfield, you don't need to keep it in a certain area. It just is easier for me in terms of understanding. Right. The 10-man ride, the, it's, been, it's a new facet of the game. Maryland has to, after the day, they tried about 12 full-court shots, made one. They're going to have to practice that. You know? Or you give the ball to Bubba, and he runs, and, man, that guy can carry the ball. and Saw that be effective, but you don't want to use him up right now. He's got a lot of miles on him this year. That's I, Bubba Fairman, number two for first, the Terps. I, before I let you go, because I know you got to go to work, uh, how's the Stanwick family doing? Uh, well, my family's always been the biggest fan of the Stanwicks. Oh, that's so nice. Uh, everyone's doing great. Um, they're still supporting the lacrosse. I got a, a text in the family text that Covey and Wells are at the Boston College women's lacrosse game um, that happened earlier today. So still big fans, but um, no one to root for. Just to, great you know, to see great you. Great to see you. Thanks okay. so much. Thanks, Thanks for being on, Thanks. and we will be back on the Viner Four Gates postgame show in College Park in a moment. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. You could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerfourgates.com. Back in College Park, so Maryland does take it 16 to 12. And Bruce, you get some of the best guests in lacrosse. How do you know the Stanwick so well? Well, because my daughter played with one of the Stanwick girls. Uh, her name, believe it or not, was Coco Stanwick. She was great. She was one of the smartest lacrosse players I ever ran across. And my daughter, you know, was a goalie, and Coco would come to her before the game and say, The shot's coming to your right shoulder. This one's shooting. She knew everything. And the whole family is just, uh, they just from A to Z, I think there was eight of them, and they all played lacrosse. Uh, the women mainly played for Georgetown, and the guys were spread out over everywhere. And, of course, Steel Stanwick played for Virginia when they, uh, when they beat Maryland. I guess it was an upset, five to three or not. No, I don't remember what it was, but they beat Maryland for the national championship, and Steel was the tour time winner. But... They're just a first-class lacrosse family. And mark my words, Wayne, 10, 15 years from now, when the little Stanwicks come up, or, or the Birches, or whoever they marry, or whatever, mm -hmm. they'll be back. They were great. What a great family. There's been articles about how the father trained the kids, throwing balls against brick walls, mm -hmm. and both hands, and these kids got into She was unbelievable. Played for Georgetown. She was fantastic. Of course, she caught up to Maryland's run, but, you know, who then? And over uh, what would have been your shoulder, I could see the Michigan women taking the field, so it's almost time for the Maryland men's press conference as a doubleheader Let's go over the game real underway. quick, and I, I'll make some comments. This was a dead-even game. I know Maryland won 16-12. to 12. And it was Maryland's senior day. Right, but Maryland got four or five goals in the final two minutes of the first half. I don't remember exactly. And Michigan just thoroughly frustrated them with the 10-man ride. I mean, that's all they're going to practice now. Because if you watch this and your records in Ohio State and Johns Hopkins, which are our three opponents, you're going to put it on Maryland because they played so bad against it. Wayne, tell everybody why this game was – it seems like how could a game be crucial? Like, Was it crucial today? I thought it was crucial. First of all – through five quarters of league play, Maryland wasn't doing so well. They once again had a really good second quarter, uh, and to me, to my mind, they hold on to win the game. But there's a limit to how many teams make the tournament, and if you start off 0 and 2, and then you have two games on the road, you don't make the Big Ten tournament. I'm not saying they might not make the tournament, but they might not. You don't know what can happen. They got to go on the road to Rutgers and Ohio State in the next two weeks. You know. There's a likelihood they could drop one of those two games, right or wrong. They which, could. which puts Maryland in the seat of having to defeat Johns Hopkins in that final and fifth game. When we and both now know Hopkins is heating up. Hopkins is now two and zero. Well, they were beating Rutgers by five with a few minutes left. But you know, you're talking about a situation. You got to make the tournament, whether you lose that first game or not. You got to have that wherewithal to be in the tournament. But. It was not a great day for Maryland. I know Coach Dillman will not be happy. It was a lot of turnovers, and the face-offs were so one-sided it was a joke. And then the 10-man ride and the turnovers from that was so one-sided it was a joke. Right. Those jokes almost canceled each other out. Talk about Logan Wisnowskis and Jared Bernhardt. We're not sure of the final stats, but together we think they had eight goals. 
And there's nothing else to say except they had eight no. goals. And I hope uh, you've all enjoyed those senior day pictures that have been flashing by. It, uh, it's senior day at Maryland in an odd way because they have one more home game left, but they made today senior day because it fit their schedule better. And, uh, you know, one of the guys that you've talked with a lot, had on the air a lot, is Curtis Corley. What's your impression of his career here? Ah, oh, it's been fantastic. Look at it. He's been here. This is his fourth year. He's been in three Final Fours. He was a semifinalist, a finalist, and a champion. All right? And he started all three times. So what else can you say about Curtis Corley? I mean, he, he's been there. He's been great. And even in the scene this year, he's a leader. And if Maryland's going to go anywhere, it's going to be due to his leadership. And I think we should remark, and this is just, believe me, the players could care less about this, but Logan Wisnowskis not selected in the, his midseason season. You know, Under Armour All-American, right. one, two, three, or the inside lacrosse All-American, right. or even honorable mention. Wayne, does that make sense? Not really. And he got, I think he had five goals today. He had uh, eight points today, right? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty uh, sure. I mean, so he maybe uh, they'll have to rethink that as this goes on. But, but Maryland, that one, and that's the game's behind us, but Tillman can't be happy because of that 10-man ride. No, they'll figure out a way because Maryland figures out a way. Right. They just do. And with the disasters that happened today... Final score, 16 to 12. 16 goals is a lot. Yeah, I picked it 16 to 5 <laughs> walking in, 16 to 12. You know, the, uh, the ability for the backside attack to walk to the side of the net and score has been an issue now for two conference games. Right. Somebody found a weakness on tape of how we rotate and we're reeling who's hot, and somebody's sliding, and the, they find a hole behind them. It's to the left of the goalie. To the goalie's left, and boom, they score. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but the W is in the bank. They're now nine and two. They'll probably remain number two. Maybe a little drop. I don't right. know. Loyal would beat Lehigh today. Mm -hmm. It's a big win for them. And uh, Duke uh, put it to Notre Dame. And uh, I think that's Notre Dame's third loss, or maybe fourth. I'm not know. positive. But, the, but they're undefeated indoors. Indoors are great. Yeah. You can't beat them indoors. I'm going to tell you that now. And on you that note. You can't beat Notre Dame indoors. And on that note, I think we're going to wrap this up. And we'll see you on Turp Talk on Wednesday, 1300 CBS Sports Radio. Let me say one thing. Johns Hopkins is coming up. April 27th. It's also football day. Football's at noon. And then the women play Johns Hopkins, which will be a great matchup. Oh, I'm going to be here for 12 hours right. that day. And then the men play at 7.30. Two years ago when they, when they were here, we had 17,400. I don't know what they're going to have this year. If the weather's good, it could be a lot more. I don't know. It's Maryland Day. Yeah. Be here. Get if your you're seats. thinking about it, be here. All right, everybody. All right. Good afternoon from College Park.